Greetings, dear listeners. We're back once again for our monthly exploration of Weird Tales. Weird Tales, the unique magazine. This month, we'll be checking out the fourth issue, June 1923. So, what's in this month's edition? Familiar names include Hamilton Craigie, Julian Kilman, Otis Adelbert Klein, and Edgar Allan Poe, of course. From the contents for June 1923, 16 thrilling short stories, two complete novelettes, two two-part stories, interesting, odd, and weird happenings. The Evening Wolves by Paul Ellsworth Treem An Exciting Tale of Weird Events Desert Madness by Harold Freeman Miners A Fanciful Novel of the Red Desert The Jailer of Souls by Hamilton Craigie A Powerful Novel of Sinister Madmen that mounts to an astounding climax. Jack O Mystery by Edwin McLaren, a modern ghost story. O Cyrus by Adam Hull Shirk. Now that's a name for you. Adam Hull Shirk, a weird tale of an Egyptian mummy. The Well by Julian Kilman, a short story. The Phantom Wolfhound by Adelbert Klein. Hmm, he seems to have lost his Otis. A Spooky Yarn by the author of The Thing of a Thousand Shapes. The Murders in the Rue Morgue by Edgar Allan Poe. A masterpiece of weird fiction. The Moon Terror by A.G. Birch. Final thrilling installment of the mysterious Chinese moon worshippers. The Man the Law Forgot by Walter Noble Burns, a remarkable story of the dead return to life. The Blade of Vengeance by George Warburton Lewis, a powerful gripping story well told. The Grey Death by Luau B. Sugarman Horrifying and Incredible Tale of the Amazon Valley The Voice in the Fog by Henry Leverage Another Thriller by the Author of Whispering Wires The Invisible Terror by Hugh Thomason An Uncanny Tale of the Jungle The Escape by Helen Rowe Heinz, a short story, The Siren, or Cyrene, The Siren, by Tarleton Collier, a storyette that is different, The Madman, by Herbert Hipwell, a night of horror in the mortuary, that's mortuary, The Chair, by Dr. Harry E. Mearness, an electrocution vividly described by an eyewitness, and, last but not least, The Cauldron by Preston Langley Hickey, True Adventures of Terror. Spoiler alert! This month's cover illustration is a not particularly well-drawn scene from the murders in the Rue Morgue, but at least it shows the killer ape. All right, all right, killer orangutan. The artist was one William F. Heitman, who, according to Terence M. Hanley, writing on the blog Tellers of Weird Tales, was an illustrator for the Indianapolis Star newspaper. Hanley is rather critical of Heitman's artistic abilities, but I put a link to the cover illustration in the description, so you can judge for yourself. 
I've also put a link to Hanley's excellent article, which lists all of Heitman's cover and interior illustrations for Weird Tales. Thanks, Terence. But even though the cover illustration is from the murders in the Rue Morgue, the story mentioned on the cover is The Evening Wolves, an exciting tale of weird events by Paul Ellsworth Treem, whose Vials of Insects had appeared in the May 1923 edition. Treem was an American journalist, born in Iowa in 1882. He was the author of books with such titles as Direct Healing and Health and Power Through Creation. It must have worked as he lived to the ripe old age of 94. John J. Miller, writing on the website Black Gate Adventures in Fantasy Literature, provides the following deep read of The Evening Wolves, describing the plot as follows. Quote, Paul Ellsworth Treem, The Evening Wolves. Unusual and well-written story for the time period, with a detail of characterization not normally seen. The leader of a gang of thieves called The Evening Wolves makes off with the proceeds of their last caper and seeks the help of the Chinese-American protagonist when the rest of the gang tracks him down. End of quote. Miller makes the following interesting comment about these early issues of Weird Tales. Quote, June 1923 was the magazine's fourth issue, and it was still clearly a magazine in search of itself. End of quote. John then goes on to observe that only seven of the 18 stories in this issue feature supernatural or fantastic elements. Now, Poe's classic the Murders in the Rue Morgue, does contain moments of horror, but it has gone down in history as, to quote Wikipedia, the first modern detective story. If it's the first modern detective story, it must feature the first modern detective. And so it does, in the person of C. Auguste Dupont. Dupont, an eccentric French recluse who uses his powers of observation and reasoning to solve a horrifying crime, the bizarre double murder of two women by an orangutan. The story is told by an anonymous narrator, the original Watson, the original faithful sidekick. Thus Dupont became the template for such future detectives and bohemians as Sherlock Holmes and Hercule Poirot. Dupont will appear in two other Poe stories, The Mystery of Marie Roget and The Purloin Letter. If you've never read The Murders in the Rue Morgue, it's worth a read or a listen. Allow me to recommend audio versions by Sherlock Holmes Magpie Audio, and by Edward E. French. Links in the description. The classic 1932 Universal film version of The Murders in the Rue Morgue is also worth checking out, and again, I've left a link for you in the description. Bella Lugosi and director Robert Flory were supposed to have made Frankenstein for Universal Pictures, but when that fell through in favor of Boris Karloff and director James Whale, they were given Rumorg, Rumorg as a kind of consolation prize, and as a result, it has been largely overlooked by horror fans and film buffs. But 
in spite of some of the lame comedy so common to films of the early 1930s, I think Rue Morgue is a forgotten gem. Robert Florey was an interesting director, and he gives the Paris of the film an expressionist look right out of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And Lugosi gives, in my opinion, one of his best performances as the evil Dr. Miracle. My name is Dr. Miracle, and I am not a sideshow charlatan. So if you think this is the usual kind of a hocus pocus, go to the box office, get your money back. So, sorry, I, I couldn't restrain myself. Honestly, I couldn't. Sorry. Finally, any film that features Charles Gamora, who made a career out of appearing in films wearing a gorilla suit and who plays Eric the Killer Ape, is definitely worth your time. Thus we find in the June 1923 issue of Weird Tales, a magazine in search of its fictional niche. I'll leave the last word to a reader who sent the following note to the airy, the airy, weird tales version of Letters to the Editor. Quote, The stories you have printed so far can be grouped under three general headings, ghost stories, snake stories, insanity stories. In your first issue, you printed a story called Ooze, which approached the type of semi-scientific stories that are liked intensely by all those who are fond of the unusual. And if you would publish at least one story of this type in each issue of your magazine, I am sure that your efforts would register larger sales. End of quote. Conrad A. Brandt, 563 West 150th Street, New York City. Well, I think Conrad has a point. But what about you, dear listeners? Recognize any of the authors or titles listed in the table of contents? Have you read any of the stories? If so, please tell us about it in the comments below. I plan to continue my monthly exploration of weird tales, issue by issue. Won't you join me as we work our way through 1923? If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the night floaters, werewolves, and the black-eyed children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs. Please. <laughs> please. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix Here, that's P X Here, while the music was the awe inspiring Ghost Processional by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod.